<laughs> oh, nice thing to say is we're starting the live. <laughs> no, that's okay. We didn't. We missed it. <laughs> yeah, trouble is living up to his name once again. Uh, he's in the other room right now. Anyway, that's kind of appropriate for today. <laughs> Hi there. <clears throat> Welcome once again to Cast Iron Wednesday, where every every Wednesday it seems like. We are uh, doing something uh, to do with, well, what else with cast iron? And I very, as always, I really appreciate everybody who uh, shows up for this. Especially today, because no, number one, no, I'm not going to get into politics. I think we've seen more than enough politics today. And that's why after the events of today, I decided I would go through with this uh, live YouTube, especially for everybody to take a break from politics. There will be no discussions of politics here uh, tonight, please, no. And, it, and that's why as well, we also enforce a no politics rule on the Cast Iron Cooking Group on Facebook as well. There, any, uh, any attempts to start any kind of political discussion will be <laughs> um, removed and we will leave it at that. If, really, if you really want to argue about politics, go to Twitter. <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna say about that because it is still uh, the first week of January. You know, the first week doesn't end until like about Friday or so, which means we are still ringing in the new. And that's why the subject for tonight is brand new cast iron, namely because there has been a real explosion in new modern cast iron over the past few years, as we know. I mean, we've already said how, you know, cast iron has made a big comeback in popularity over the past few years. Everybody these days who is anybody having to do with cooking is pushing cast iron in some way or another. Celebrity chefs with their own lines of cast iron pans. Uh, Lodge cast iron has had the best decade in its entire history as far as business is concerned, and that's why they opened up their new foundry. And of course, many yeah, quite a few now. Uh, small <clears throat> American startup companies are uh, producing their, all ca their own cast iron pans. And of course, they're all doing it really because of a love of cast iron. I mean, I mean, really, who could say it's like, oh, yeah, this is going to make us millionaires making cast iron frying pans? No, probably not. Although I know they're hoping it does because, yeah, that would be a good thing. I mean, that's really the whole point of it. But it's really nice, really, to live in these days because ca because cast iron cooking is so exciting. I mean, not just because the cooking is so much fun. I mean, I've said that enough times, too. You know, the whole point of this is the cooking. Uh, but because, you know, there's so many new things happening these days, and it's really exciting, and it's hard to keep up with it all. In fact, I can't keep up with it. I mean, I, and I can't afford it. I have no space for it. And, um, well, why should I have to, uh, why should I have all the fun when there are so many other people out there, you folks here on this YouTube channel, all the people on Facebook and Imager and Reddit and uh, TikTok and all that, who are really uh, enjoying all of the uh, new cast iron that's coming out. Um, and having said that, let's say hi to a couple of people. Um, Bookworm73, if I can find new at a good price. Yeah, that's always the thing. But there's some, yeah, there is something about new cast iron as well. You know, we, I, even here and even on Facebook, have done a lot of talking about the new elite cast iron pans. Like I mentioned my Stargazer pan, for instance. But there is another generation of cast iron pans that has uh, come out only recently and we don't seem to talk much about it may probably because most of it is asian made but i'm talking about on amazon especially if you look on amazon for cast iron skillet you will see a lot of stuff from lodge you will also see a lot of asian made pans brand new with new labels or new uh brands um like uh, the only one I can think of right now is Legend, Utopia Kitchen, uh, and a couple of others as well. But there are many, many other pans like that uh, where, again, you have to go to places like Amazon. You still can't get them at places like Walmart or the like. They are made in Asia, yes. And here's the interesting thing I find is that just about all of these pans are essentially carbon copies, so to speak. 
of large cast iron pans. You know, everybody uh, seems to say how large is just behind the times because, you know, they're rough surface and, oh, these new pans are, the new elite pans are so much better. And yet all of these new companies are copying large. If you go on, as I said, on Amazon and the pricing is about the same as what you might pay for a large pan too. And I know, I'm sure large doesn't like that because it's a lot more competition, but well, that's the business market for you. And, that, and after all, Lodge is successful. And so a lot of other companies are trying to become successful as well. And yet, again, they're following in Lodge's footsteps. And uh, I really don't have any of those kind of pans with me either because, um, well, number one, as I've said enough times before, I've got myself a decent collection of cast iron pans. And I really do not have not, no intention of getting another brand new pan just because it's there. I've succumbed to temptation a few times, yes. But um, nonetheless, no, I'm not going to keep up and be able to show off copies of everything. Um, uh, although I should give an example of that because one thing I did show before, um, and I found this on my birthday last year, this is Asian made, and this is in fact a cast iron skillet. Um, and I found this at Marshall's for $10 you know, Marshall's TJ Maxx and all that. And it's by a company called um, Smith and Clark Ironworks. They're actually a uh, small subsection of a uh, general kitchen supplier that supplies a lot of the stuff you see at TJ Maxx and uh, Marshall's and the like. But I guess you could say this is an example of how popular cast iron has gotten these days because a company will just as easily make a uh, cast iron pan like this because and i mean after all they wouldn't do it if they didn't expect to make a profit on it so things like this are really part of what makes it all so exciting <laughs> um <clears throat> yeah it was it was only ten dollars i mean believe me i couldn't believe it either and that's why i had to snatch it up so <laughs> uh william hurt has anyone tried the greater goods skillet uh, about $70. Um, I have not. And let me say right now as well, as I said, I have a couple of these pans here. I do not have all of them. So please, if you are familiar with any of the, any, any of the brands, these ones here or any others, you know, like Smithy, Butter Pat, please comment here. Please go ahead and, uh, and speak your piece because I mean, I'd like to, uh, know more about these myself. Um, no, I'm not saying I want to own another butter pad and another, uh, field and all that, but I, it's really interesting to learn about them. So please, please go ahead and talk about them. Uh, what else do we have here? We've got, uh, Santa's 309. I don't have a lot of, of cast iron, but I got the Walmart brand skillet sanded it and it works great after seasoning well yeah uh i know you're talking about the ozark trail brand at walmart and um yeah that is really an example of what the, we consider to be cheap cast iron as you know because it does have a very rough surface and i understand why you sanded it and i guess i should say here that yes i know for people in the cast iron cooking group talking about sanding cast iron is not allowed on the group for one real reason and that is of course We've got, it's a huge group with over 370,000 people on it. Many, many people who are just starting to get into this hobby. And we do not want to encourage people to do something to their cast iron that could very well damage it or destroy it or destroy them. I mean, as you know, sanding a cat. <clears throat> sanding a cast iron pan smooth will give you a wonderful smooth co cooking surface, as I'm sure you know. But it does things like it destroys any collector value, which I know, big deal. A Walmart skillet, there's really no collector value. There's a very, very small chance it could damage the pan or crack it. Um, and most of the time it won't. And so that's why I'm, that's why I know for people who, you know, who sand those, these pants, it's really, uh, that's really, they feel it's certainly safe enough to do it. And it's your cast iron and you can do what you want with it. So on the cast iron cooking group, we do have to cater to the lowest common denominator. So because of that, we do not talk about things like sanding. Here, I don't mind it so much because, yeah, sanding, as you know, though, does have some disadvantages, too, because it may be difficult getting that uh, skillet to smooth, to season properly. And 
and also I personally do not see any real need to sand a uh, cast iron pan as far as use. Now, sanding a pan will, of course, you know, make it look really, really wonderful. And that's why all, that's why all these new pans here, they all have polished, smooth glass mirror surfaces because they feel wonderful and they look great. But you figure that after you've seasoned it up, it uh, doesn't look quite so flashy and new. Um, so, so in the long run, you know, uh, the look even of a, gr of a uh, ground down pan will, will eventually become like any other cast iron pan. Having said all that, I'm sure, you know, using your Walmart pan, well, again, I'm sure you're probably enjoying it. And, and please, uh, obviously, you know, have, have fun uh, cooking with it and, and please show off uh, what, what you're doing with it. It may perhaps inspire you to get into look for something like a lodge or some or something older like a Wagner or Griswold or who knows maybe even make the investment or the op or find the opportunity to get one of the more fancier and more expensive cast iron pans but anyway yes yeah, so there's nothing wrong with using those Walmart pans <laughs> okay I've talked uh, would you would like to hear your opinion of the field pan um, uh, culinary fanatic loves them. Oh yeah, no, it look the field pan really looks nice. I will say this, and as uh, some people on this channel know already, I actually was offered a free field skillet uh, a year or two ago, and I turned it down. And I have been blasted on this channel again and again. You won't believe some of the comments until I've gotten on some of my videos about that. I mean, really, from the way you're talking about, I mean, I would almost think I was dealing with cult members. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like, seriously, you are an idiot. Yes, using that word for turning that field pan down and actually getting a large pan and, and the like. But um, my reasoning is what I just said. I already have a really <laughs> decent collection of cast iron pans, and I can't get another skillet even as nice as the field <laughs> just because it's there and it's nice. Because, you know, field, I will say this, field, as you know, is really trying to position themselves to be the modern-day Griswold. Their pans are kind of based on the Griswold design, although I know they don't have a uh, pour spout. They even produced a lid now, and I think a Dutch oven, but I'm not sure, but a lid that looks like a vintage Griswold lid. And of course, because they are ground, you know, they're polished so smooth and they're light and thin, and they really, again, are trying to be the modern day Griswold. And here's my thing. I already have a Griswold. I have several Griswold pans. They are also wonderful and neat and are light and thin and smooth and beautiful. And I like using my Griswold pans. So as a user, I personally really don't have much of a use for the, uh, for the field skillet. Nonetheless, I know cast, um, the uh, culinary fanatic, he, no, that's all right. He really enjoys that uh, his field skillets and great. And so do everybody else who use them. I mean, that's the thing too. Um, just about any cast iron pan, uh, w whatever you get, <coughs> excuse me, you're probably going to end up loving it regardless of the brand. I mean, whether you've got Again, whether you've got the stargazer here, am I holding it upside down? No, I'm not. Uh, or whether you've got, oh, yeah, I'm going to come back to that in a second. Whether you've got the Finex pan, uh, the Finex skillet. This was kind, this is very special to me because it was a Christmas present from the culinary fanatic, no less. Back in 2014, almost immediately after Finex first started up, he actually sent me one of these as a Christmas present, and I have been using it ever since, and I really love it. Uh, by the way, the fun this is also extremely heavy, much heavier than you might get with a large skillet. It's thick and, and really, really, uh, yeah, what can I say? You know, it's I don't want to drop this on my foot. And for this reason, I really enjoy it because I'm, I personally prefer the thick and heavy cast iron. I think it's the best when it comes to searing for steaks and uh, the, 
and uh, the like. If I'm going to sear myself a steak, my first choice will probably be the Finex. Um, and of course, then again, we've got Lodge, who, as you know, about a year or so ago, started to compete with these new elite cast iron pans, and they released their Blacklock series, which are meant to be light and thin and very versatile. And I agree. I got this even though I did not get the uh, field skillet and people are saying, why did you not get the field skillet and you did get the Lodge Blacklock? I had a reason for it. This is shaped with a round bottom exactly like a chef skillet. And I got this specifically so that I could use it as a chef skillet. And it makes a great chef skillet too, especially if you're for any breakfast you want to make, I would go to the uh, Blacklock for that reason. So yeah, there are reasons to use these things. <laughs> Okay, and uh, I only sanded the mainstays because it was very inexpensive, and I'm a blacksmith, and so yes. Uh, and yeah, here's hope. I really hope you get a lot of good use out of it. I grounded down a few cheap modern lodge skillets, initially too smooth, so I went back with a coarser grit, and <laughs> so and the seasoning sticks better. Yeah, that's that is the thing. And somebody says that is why Stargate. Stargazer is giving me a free micro abrasion treatment. Oh, that's interesting. So that I didn't know that. So basically, <laughs> Stargazer ground down their pans too smooth. Yeah, I guess you might say that because even though I got this almost a year ago and I've been using it, as you can see, I'm still have not been able to season it very well. And I understand a lot of people who have the Stargazer uh, actually are having that kind of problem and that seasoning does have trouble holding on to it. Having said that, I still enjoy using this. So I'm not, I'm still actually happy to uh, own a Stargazer. So also I have to admit there's a bit of a personal bias in this case in that the logo of the Stargazer um, looks a little similar. <laughs> okay, uh, your video isn't buffering properly again in northern Louisiana. I apologize. Is any other company, any other part of the country having the same problem? Yes, uh, yeah, let them know. If anybody else is having buffering problems, please, please say so. Eliza Solorzano, I am excited to catch you. Well, thank you. I'm a new subscriber. I have my mom's Griswold skillet, small slant logo. Just got my Lodge Dutch oven. Um, I have not done much bread baking. I mean, a few times I have made uh, no-knead bread. And um, for me, I've had difficulty with the no-knead bread. I've made pizza dough quite a few times. But bread baking is one of those things, yet I still have to, get, I still have to practice a lot and really get more into. What I, when I have made uh, no-knead bread, I know what they say, no-knead bread works best in a cast iron pan. And I agree. The one problem I've had is that just about every time I try the long, slow rise with no knead bread, you know, you have to do it for anywhere like from 10 to 18 hours, the yeast always spoils and I end up with a uh, fermented alcoholic scent and taste to it. And no, it does not taste exactly like sourdough. It has its own taste that actually is okay in that, yes, I can eat it, but I'm for that reason, when I make no need bread, I tend to go for what they call the turbo method, the kind that uses a lot more yeast and rises much quickly, like maybe in an hour and a half or so. <laughs> um, I agree the thicker is better for searing and baking. What is your favorite pan in all of your collection? <laughs> oh, really? That, I, all of them. <laughs> well, what I mean is that, I mean, I've got different uses for each pan and I've, and so it's uh, one of the reasons why I do these videos is so that I can rotate through my collection as much as I can. I mean, I just said, for instance, if I wanted to sear a steak, I would go for the Finex. I've done a lot of regular cooking with my good old, uh, uh, Birmingham Stove and Range Red Mountain uh, number eight, which I found very useful. But on the other hand, there's also a BSR uh, fish fryer, an oval fryer that makes a really wonderful uh, skillet that fits over two burners on the stove. And then there's the big jambalaya pots. There's my lodge Dutch oven. There's the Griswold Dutch oven. There's the stove enamel Dutch oven, the BSR 12 Dutch oven. I can't really say honestly that I have a, 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 skill, a single one. If I were to, uh, you know, if my house was on fire, which one would I choose first? Huh. Hard to say at this point. I don't know. 
maybe the BSR number eight. But then again, I'd miss my Dutch oven, so I can't even answer that. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Lodge Rust Eraser. If you use that too aggressively, does that ruin collect collectability on a vintage skillet? I have not used that yet. Uh, and I found out there are actually other rust erasers besides the Lodge one as well that do pretty much the same thing. Um, and I do not know the makeup of that. I mean, if it has any kind of real hard or gritty or solid bits in it, in the long run, maybe there's a possibility it might scratch the iron, uh, but I don't know enough about it. And if anybody else cares to answer that, then uh, please feel free to do so. <laughs> um, let me see. I use the Lodge brand recipe, and the bread turns out amazing every time. Oh, yeah. Uh, one other thing about Lodge. I mean, I'm talking about all this brand new cast iron here. I mean, like I said, we've got the Black Lock, the uh, Fine X, the... Um, uh, the Stargazer, and yet, of course, there's still nothing wrong with a Lodge cast iron skillet either, especially since uh, this is also a brand new pan. And yeah, I am really glad I got this one last year when Lodge put it out. So <laughs> I promised I'm not going to get into politics, as I said. However, it does seem like that there was a lot of stuff happening in 2020 that really was appropriate for Rosie the Riveter. It was a scary coincidence, in fact, but that makes this pan all the more special, and I'm glad to have it. And my last political statement, I promise, is that I have no idea what Lodge is going to be doing for their Made in America pan in 2021, but I'd like to suggest to Lodge that it should probably be an image of President Lincoln. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Back to business here. Okay, um, let me see. Oh, yeah, one other one uh, that I should point out because it's, um, it's turned out to be kind of unique. And then I'm going to get into a little bit of cooking. And that would be Australian-made, namely, as, you know, as some people may know, Solid Technics. And uh, here's, here's an interesting thing is that they came on the scene a few years ago, started out by making cast iron. This is another wonderful pan that I received as a Christmas present. I never would have expected to get anything like this. I'm very, very glad to get, have this. It's 30 centimeters across or just a little bit more than 12 inches. So this is a really nice and big circular pan. I've used this for baking, for pizzas, ratatouille, and it's really great. Um, Solid Technics started out as a maker of cast iron, and then they discontinued their cast iron business. I guess it wasn't profitable because it can be very expensive to produce. And so now they're making carbon steel pans and what they call wrought iron pans. Um, and anybody who wants to comment on that, please feel free to do so. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. It's like there are so many choices we have these days for brand new cast iron, and it's really, really great. <coughs> Excuse me. Because you can go for pretty much any budget that you want. If you are, if you're on a limited budget, well, as you know, you can go to places like Walmart and Big Lots and pick yourself up a nice, so nice, basic Asian made cast iron skillet. If you've got, uh, um, if you want to go up just a notch or so, you can go for a lodge and uh, a number of lodges, other competitors, and then you can get into the stratosphere and go crazy and go with anywhere from uh, the black lock is a little bit less expensive than the other pan than the other fancy pans, and I'm sure lodge did that on purpose. Uh, then we get into stuff like the field, the stargazer, and then we get really into the stratosphere again when we talk about the fine X, which is about $175, or the Butter Pad, or the Smithy, which like run about $200, $250 or so. And then there's another one called Burrow Furnace, where they every single one of those is made by hand. So, and those also run for like about three, four hundred dollars. And there is the question, I guess. I mean, what is the difference between, say, a $250 butter pat skillet? versus a $90 field skillet versus a $20 lodge. I mean, they are all great for cooking, and they all had their uh, wonderful uh, advantages and some disadvantages. Cast iron is not perfect, 
It's really, really great, but not perfect. But I mean, there, there is a subject for debate and not just like Smithy versus Lodge, but more like, again, Smithy versus Butterpad versus Stargazer. <laughs> um, yeah, really, uh, none of them are exactly the same. And so uh, it's possible you may find you one may appeal to you more than another. <laughs> Have you made any upgrades to your duck recipe? Um, my duck recipe is still about the same because I don't make duck very often. I liked how it turned out, and I'm, and at this point, I'm happy with uh, the way with uh, the way that it works. So I, next time I get a duck, I will probably still make it uh, that same way, unless I want to actually go for it and try making a Peking duck. <laughs> Uh, Cast Iron Cookware Channel has a good yeast roll recipe. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I know that guy. Uh, well, no, I don't know him, but, I mean, I've said hi to him, and he said hi to me, and he's got a nice channel. He's surpassed me in, in subscribers, too, so obviously he uh, really knows where his niche lies. So, And I fully admit a couple of things. One is that this is a hobby, whereas he's made his a full-time business and profession. So he's put a lot more effort into that. But I, I enjoy this channel. And as, as I said, I'm really happy that people are uh, watching and that they are slow, that uh, my channel is slowly growing. I mean, at this point, who knows, maybe in 10 years, <laughs> I might uh, reach the point where uh, well, the number of subscribers that the culinary fanatic has. <laughs> um, video problem must be in LA or Louisiana. Enjoy watching, still buffering here. Well, again, my condolences about that. Uh, maybe, honestly, it's the internet provider down there. Somebody says, I have a, ni a solid Technics 9-inch uh, carbon steel pan, Gabriel Sandifer, that is, and really like it. Oh, yeah. And if I remember right, they also shaped theirs in the in the uh, shape of a uh, chef's skillet. So uh, we're doing, uh, yeah, and, and I'd say that's a good reason to uh, own a pan like that. Maybe just a Mount Rushmore pattern. Oh, yeah. Well, also, yeah, as you know, Cracker Barrel, they already did a Mount Rushmore pan, and they did do a Lincoln pan. Um, and although Lodge seems to have uh, taken the lion's share of attention as far as American patriotic cast iron goes, and I do think the Lodge made an American series, you know, it has a, a some, I, what can you call it, like a more artistic uh, design to it. It just looks a little bit less cheesy i guess than the um uh than the cracker bell now the cracker bell is great and i have and i have a couple of those and i'm really glad to have those i have their original buffalo nickel skillet i have their uh, uh american seal that's the one with an, Amer you know, an american eagle the seal of the united states and uh I'll, just a couple years ago i got their uh, paul revere skillet because I'm a born and bred New Englander, and yeah, I had to get that one because it had Paul Revere on it. <laughs> That's with one of the cases I succumbed to temptation. But anyway, as I said, you know, we've got all of these modern uh, cast iron pans here, which work just as good, maybe even better than some vintage pans. I mean, after all, they're designed... Uh, with a lot of care and finesse. And really, I mean, yes, I know Griswold put a lot of effort into theirs, yes, but really, I mean, for the, uh, you know, for the cast iron makers in the early part of the 20th century, really, these were frying pans, and they were largely disposable. They still did their best to uh, make a really, really good quality product, which is why, you know, like a BSR pan in the kitchen is really a wonderful user. But, you know, it's like in the end, they were frying pans. And it was really only very recently that cast iron skillet really started to become something more than just a frying pan. Now it really is to a lot of people. It's a, it's a collector's item. It's a piece of art. It's and it's a status symbol too. Yes. I mean, you can, uh, when visitors and family come, you get to uh, pull out your really, really special pan and make something for them. And what's wrong with that? That's what it's for. So it's, besides, cooking is supposed to be fun. And, and doing something like that is fun. So I see no reason to feel guilty about showing off a, uh, your uh, really nice cast iron pans. <laughs> 
Uh, haven't tried the duck recipe yet. Okay, having, yeah, I am for now. Miss French Twist. Oh, yeah. Hello, Miss French Twist. I just found out about that one. Okay, uh, have, just came on. Oh, anyway. <clears throat> but, yeah. Um, so, modern-day cast iron, and, of course, there are, of course, some people who, again, say just that. I mean, what's the point about, of spending, uh, you know, $100 on a uh, modern-day cast iron pan when you, when you can find a vintage uh, BSR or Griswold, sometimes for $5? Well, there's the thing. Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, you may look for a very, very long time and then finally come across a Griswold you can afford purely by accident. Whereas you can, of course, invest in uh, one of the new cast iron pans immediately. And really, the convenience is that it does help depending on your situation. <laughs> um, okay. While we were at it as well, I mean, since after all, this is a uh, channel for cooking and I've got all these pans out, I might as well uh, get some use out of it, which is why um, I was just going to stand here and talk. But, uh, well, my, you know, my friend Jamie, she suggested that we still do some cooking anyway. So we're going to do something nice and simple and throw together some brownies. And for that, we might as well use the um, solid technique. Uh, because this thing here is uh, 12 inches across, and so we're going to get ourselves a really nice uh, set of brownies with this. Um, and, and besides, um, I think I need to uh, help uh, reinforce the seasoning anyway. Besides as well, brownies are so easy to make. I mean, it's, you, I mean, you can literally throw them together, and that's really what I'm looking forward to doing. But let me check these comments one last time. Greetings from Doylestown, Ohio. My daily, my daily users are number nine Wapak, or is it Waypack with a ghost eerie? Oh boy, I'll bet that I'll bet that actually is a really, really nice surface on it too. Wapaks, I can't, I don't know how they were pronounced. They uh, really had, you know, they had really nice, smooth surfaces. I will say that. What do you want to, this year's Lodge Legacy item to be? Um, that's hard to say. I mean, Lodge is supposed to be bringing back stuff that uh, has been discontinued. Who knows? Maybe they will uh, bring back their their big fish fryer. No, no, I know. They did the fish fryer. I meant the uh, deep fryer, the oval fryer that they uh, got from um, um, from uh, BSR. Now, I am, I am not privy to Lodge. I have no real contacts inside Lodge, and I could not even guess what their uh, schedule is for this year. So I don't know what they're going to do for their Legacy Series or their um, next Made in America pan. I mean, they did re-release their breakfast pan last year, and really... They what didn't get a lot of attention for it, did they? <laughs> so I'm sure they're probably taking that into consideration. However, um, let me bring this over here. Here is the part again where we do the roller coaster ride. <laughs> Come to YouTube Live where you get to, to uh, there you go, where you get to enjoy a sense of vertigo and dizziness. And now from here as well, got to uh, move a couple of things around. Because <laughs> it's showing off, yes, I mean, this made in America pan. I've made cornbread and I have made uh, cookies in this. And I'll probably be doing that again. Oh, yeah, definitely on Memorial Day and almost certainly at, after that as well. Or before that, I mean. Let's see. Oh. Put that back. And for now, we've got Stargazer. I spilled a little bit of flour in it. We have the Finex. <clears throat> However, I do have to make room here. <laughs> so, means we can put the solid techniques here. Ugh, holy boy, these things are heavy. <laughs> and that's good. All right. Okay, now that we'll do that, let's actually get some work done which is going to be nice and easy. And anyway, here's how easy it is to um, make brownies. And that is you start yourself off with three quarters of a cup of flour. Good thing I measured it in, in advance. 
Add in your baking soda and a, and a dash of kosher salt. Oh, sorry. A little late now. That's all right. Okay. Okay, I guess it's my brownie recipe. And, of course, you've got to whisk the dry ingredients together. Nice and simple. After which point, we... Um, oh, yeah. How can I forget? Before I go any further, I've got to start preparing the chocolate, though. So, that means I think I'll readjust this a little bit. And while we're at it... Uh, ta -ta -ta. Fortunately, it looks like we're going to get some more use out of the uh, Lodge... Made in America pan, which I've already used a few times since I uh, got it last year. So I'm happy about that. Um, for here, we're just going to melt some chocolate. So we're going to be using a combination of cocoa powder and uh, melted chocolate. That will make for some really, really rich brownies. And I'm definitely looking forward to that. To this... There's really nothing to it. Anyway, while we're here, um, as I mentioned already, the subject, you know, as I said, of new cast iron. Well, like I said, this is the Lodge um, made in America, which is really, I mean, it's the same as any other Lodge pan, except it has a very nice design on the bottom. And we've already, you know, you know we've mentioned how, you know, a so-called rough surface is uh, still absolutely fine for cooking because with cast iron, really the thing is low and slow unless you are doing something really high powered like uh, searing a steak, for instance. Um, there's, it's really good at melting butter too, as you can see. While we're at it, while this is going, let me see what else we have here. Uh, wifey says my Grizz number 14 is now her pizza skillet, <laughs> as long as I can borrow it. Uh, yeah, then, there you go. Happy wifey, happy lifey. <laughs> um, boiler dude, yeah, to let your wife take it over. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, Griswold number 14. I mean, it better in my opinion, better to use it and get some use out of it and keep the seasoning up rather than to just let it sit on a shelf unused for years and then become rusty again and dusty. Um, yeah, I know there is an extremely small chance it could be damaged during use, but you can say that really about any uh, kitchen item. One of the many advantages of cast iron, as opposed to other antiques, of course, is that they get better with use. So that's why I'm not afraid of cooking in my BSR or my Griswold pans. Um, although, I though I mean, might not be a bad idea to keep an eye out as well for another vintage number 14, <laughs> like maybe a Lodge or a uh, BSR, if you happen to come across one at a uh, decent price. <laughs> And while this is going, let's, let's, okay, what do we, what else do we have here? I've been watching on my phone, trying to watch the, watch on the fire tablet. YouTube is saying live event playback is not supported on this client. That, a live event playback, that sounds like the fire um, pan may, well, doesn't Google own YouTube too? <laughs> um, that they are, no, that's an Amazon fire. I'm sorry. It sounds like that maybe it just might not be completely compatible with YouTube, unfortunately. John Vincent Brimfield, hopefully this year, well, we can cross our fingers that uh, they may very well work to bring the uh, pandemic under control to the point where I would trust going to a uh, big event like uh, Brimfield again. <laughs> Cast iron is super cheap at flea markets as long as they aren't vintage dealers. Yeah, that's the thing. The dealers really know what they know what they are selling. And there's another thing. I mean, really, is a ninety dollar um, field skillet really going to cause that much more than a vintage Griswold at a uh, antique mall or uh, antique vendor? You know, someone who knows what those prices are and they often jack up the prices ridiculously, which is also reason why almost 
all of the cast iron on eBay is, again, ridiculously expensive. I spilled some butter. <laughs> um, to the point where you have to look a long time on eBay before you can uh, come across a good score on there. Yes, they do happen, but it's not easy. And uh, it can be a long time before you get a uh, good eBay score, pretty much like it can be a long time in any other vintage cast iron hunt as well. And at this point, I think we can safely start adding some chocolate chips to this. Probably more than that. I don't think that was the uh, right amount. I'm supposed to go for like about six to eight ounces of chocolate chips. So, this means we have to open another bag. And do this right. There we go. That should probably be enough. Oh, yeah. Brownies. <laughs> and here I am trying to lose weight, too. <laughs> like so many other people, I put on more than enough pounds and during this uh, lockdown. And that's one other reason why I'm looking forward to this to be over. So that I can get out more and have fewer excuses <laughs> to binge. And I guess that's one of the disadvantages, as I found out, of, learn of uh, learning how to cook. I mean, yeah... It's almost like being a uh, dealer of uh, certain illegal uh, substances and that they say a good dealer does not get hooked on his own product. When it comes to cooking, that can be pretty hard to do. But yeah, okay, you can see we're getting at the point here where this is not taking long to melt at all. So that means while we're doing this, let's get back to the business here. I have already mixed together the dry ingredients. So now it's just a matter of the wet ingredients, which is a cup of sugar and half a cup of brown sugar. Plop. Da, 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 da. Mix all that in. Keep on going with this so that it doesn't burn. Though it doesn't look like that's likely at this temperature, but still I'd better not be too careful. Then half a cup of, half a cup of cocoa powder. That's really all that there is to it. I mean, at this point, this now pretty much has the consistency of a box cake mix, because all I have to do now is add the eggs. And the chocolate. Am I missing something? Let me double check here. Uh, da, 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 that's really about it, okay. Yeah, no, there's not gonna be any extra um, milk or anything like that in this. So, means, let's get this all in here. Mix all this, keep mixing this, and let's also get the eggs. Okay, here's two, as always, thank you for your patience while we do this. One. Two. And three. And it's really just a matter, again, of mixing it all together. And that, at least, starts with the batter. There we go. As you can see, this is actually thickening, it's very, thickening up very easily. In fact, maybe I should not be using a whisk. 
but let's keep going here. Now, once I add the rest of that, I will switch over, and there it goes again, switch over to that spatula, which I suspect I should do any moment. So, let's do this, get rid of this extra goop. Then from here, all we really need to do, we don't even need to mix it very much. That's the thing. With, uh, with brownie batter, you don't have to excessively mix it. Just enough, really, so that we can be sure it is all mixed together. So having done that, it's time now. Oh, good. This is not excessively hot time to add the chocolate. Ah, uh, yes. There we go. Uh, that was easy. Better turn this off now. 